Here's a video for notes 3-1, geometric sequences. So a geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers in which the ratio between any two consecutive terms is a constant. In other words, it's a sequence in which you multiply each term by the same number to produce the next. One way you can identify a geometric sequence is if it has a pattern of multiplying or dividing. So if you're multiplying or dividing by the same number each time to get the terms in the sequence, uh, it would be considered a geometric sequence. Uh, so now uh, the definition of a common ratio. So we use the letter R. R is the number being multiplied each time. So with arithmetic sequences, we use D, which is the common difference. Um, but with geometric sequences, we use R, which is the common ratio. So here's an example of a geometric sequence. So we see the sequence 1, 2, 4, 8. So the pattern is to multiply each term by the same number, which is 2, to determine the next term. So for instance, we start with 1. When we multiply that by 2, we get 2. Then when we multiply 2 by 2, we get 4. When we multiply 4 by 2, we get 8. So we would say that it's a geometric sequence, and the common ratio is 2. So that common ratio is whatever you're multiplying by. So if instead um, our sequence was maybe it started with 8 and then went to 4, then went to 2, then went to 1, that pattern would be divide by 2. That would still be considered a geometric sequence, but instead of the common ratio being 2, that common ratio would actually be 1 half. So when we say divide by a number, that means the common ratio is going to be 1 over whatever that number is. So we'll just call that number n. We'll call it 1 over n. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. So it says, determine whether each of the following sequence represents a geometric sequence or not. If it does, find the common ratio and the next three terms. So looking at the first one, it goes 3, 6, 12, 24. So one way to figure out what the common ratio is is to actually take the second term and divide it by the first term. So 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. Then we can see if that's going to work in terms of uh, the pattern of multiplying. So let's see, 3 times 2 is 6. So, so far so good. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. So since we have this common pattern of multiply by 2, we would say it's yes, it's geometric. The common ratio is whatever you're multiplying by. So the common ratio would be 2. Um, and then the next three terms, so 24 times 2 is 48. So that would be my next term. 48 times 2, let's see, that's uh, 96. And then 96 times 2, what is that? That's 192. So there's the next three terms. Oops, not, not 129, 192. All right, let's look at example two. So we have 19, 15, 11, 7. So right away, just by looking at this, I can tell that this is not geometric because the pattern seems to be subtracting 4. One way you can tell uh, geometric is if we look at the first example, we can see how the numbers are increasing pretty fast. This one, they're kind of decreasing at a constant rate. So this is going to be not geometric. This sequence is actually arithmetic with a common difference of negative 4. All right, looking at example 3. So I have 128, 32, 8, 2. So I know that it's decreasing, which means my common ratio is probably going to be a fraction that is less than 1. Um, so let's see. To figure out my common ratio, like I said, we can do what we did in the first one. We take the second term and divide it by the first term. So 32 divided by 128. That's 0.25, or we should write it as a fraction, 1 fourth. So let's see if that pattern works. So we can think of this as dividing by 4. 128 divided by 4 gives me 32. 32 divided by 4 is 8, so that works. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so that works. So the pattern is divide by 4. 
which means my common ratio is one fourth. So we would say, yes, it's geometric. My common ratio is one fourth. And then to get the next um, three terms, we can do two times one fourth, which is one half. And then we can do one half times one fourth. which is one eighth, and then one eighth times one fourth, it's gonna be, oops, one over 32. For the fractions, really what you're doing is you're taking the denominator and multiplying it by four. Um, that's how we get those fractions. Um, it's also correct if you wanna instead write these as decimals, that would still work as well. One half would be uh, 0.5. 1 eighth would be 0.125, and 1 over 32 would be 0 0.03125. All right, so now that we can write an explicit formula for geometric sequences, now we should be able, or sorry, now that we can identify a uh, geometric sequence, now we should be able to write an explicit formula for a geometric sequence. So the explicit formula for a geometric sequence is going to be gn equals g1, which is the first term, and then parentheses, the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So this n minus 1 is an exponent. Um, so it looks kind of similar to the arithmetic sequence, but again, instead of using uh, the common difference, we're using the common ratio, um, and instead of it, the n minus 1 just being in parentheses, um, it's actually an exponent. All right, this uh, set of problems, it says for each geometric sequence, we're going to write the explicit formula and find the term listed. So looking at this first example, the pattern here is divide by 3, which means my common ratio is going to be 1 third. Uh, so, uh, and then my first term we see is 81. So it's my explicit formula is going to be gn equals 81 and then in parentheses, my common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So now we can find the eighth term by plugging in 8 for n. So this is going to be 81 times 1 third to the 8 minus 1 power. So we could actually simplify this if we wanted to 81 to the 1 third to the seventh power. And we're going to do order of operations. So parentheses and exponents go first. So we're going to do 1 third to the 7th power. And then we're going to multiply that by 81. So as a fraction, um, we're going to get 1 over 27. My recommendation is to do this in your Desmos calculator so you can get a fraction. Um, because as a decimal, it's something pretty ugly. 0 0.037, 0 0.037, 0 0.037 repeating. Um, but uh, I prefer having a simplified fraction, since you all have Chromebooks. All right, looking at example two, uh, so this is an increasing function, and it looks like my pattern is being multiplied by five. So that means my common ratio is going to be five, and my first term is five. So my f explicit formula is going to be gn equals five, parentheses five, to the n minus 1 power. This problem, we're finding the ninth term, so we're going to plug that in for n. So it's going to be 5, parentheses 5, to the 9 minus 1, which is 5, parentheses 5, to the 8th power. So uh, we're going to do 5 to the 8th power first, and then we're going to multiply that by 5. which gives us a really big number. It's going to be uh, 1,953,125. All right, then this last example. Uh, so this looks like a pattern of uh, multiplying by 4, which means my common ratio is 4. My first term is 0.25. So my explicit formula it's going to be 0.25, parentheses 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 0.
parentheses 4 to the n minus 1. To find the tenth term, we're going to plug in 10 for n. So 0 0.25 times 4 to the 10 minus 1, which is 0 0.25 times 4 to the ninth power, which is going to be 65,536. All right, now for a question on the homework. So we need to determine if the sequence is arithmetic or not. So it looks like this is a decreasing function. Remember, one way that you can identify the common ratio, if there is one, is taking the second term and dividing it by the first term. So 3 divided by 9 is 1 third. So it looks like our pattern is divide by 3. So let's just make sure that that works for all of these. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1 divided by 3 is 1 third, so that looks to be the pattern. So yes, this is arithmetic. My common ratio is going to be 1 third, since the patterns divide by 3. And then I can write my explicit formula, which is going to be the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. And now to find the seventh term, we're going to plug in 7 for n. So 9 parentheses 1 third to the 7 minus 1. So to the 6th power. So when I put that in my cal calculator, we get, as a fraction, 1 over 81. So the 7th term is 1 over 81. If you write it as a decimal, uh, it's, it's an ugly number, 0 0.01234567871. So uh, I'm just going to leave it as 1 over 81.